everybody. Welcome back to the Tipsy Coast. We are your tipsy host, Sarah, Sarah, and Lindsay. Hello. Hey, guys. What's up? Uh-huh. Boys and beat me out. Not what? much. How are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I did what to you? You beat me out the gate. Okay. Out the gate. Okay. <laughs> you finish your sentence. So I shorten phrases sometimes. Is that weird? I was like, beat me up. Beat, beat me. me out. <laughs> The just gate. Beat me. <laughs> it is weird. Just read my mind. <laughs> okay. Right. I like to shorten things. Yeah. Yeah. What are we um what are we talking about tonight? True, True crime. crime. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't doing it with you. How dare you? You motherfucker. <laughs> you abandoned me. I say it. And then you abandoned me halfway through. Because I saw that she was stopping. <laughs> so you stopped. I thought we were gonna have a moment. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. <clears throat> no, <clears throat> the moment has passed. True crime. <laughs> you didn't even look okay, to say, what are we talking about? Fine. We're doing a group true crime again. <laughs> yes, oh, we are. We're down here. Okay. We're moving on. Uh, group true crime. And it just happens to be about somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, Boydson. Yes, it is. And she, it is a she, our first <laughs> female serial killer that we're going to talk about. She did some things. Okay. Are you going to tell us her name? Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are doing it on Eileen Wuornos. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. The monster herself. Have you seen that movie? I have. I watched it last <clears throat> night just to refresh my memory, and it's still so good. It is. Before you ask. No, I have not seen yeah, that movie. I know you haven't. Yeah. Charlize Theron. Or is it Theron? I, I think it's Throne. Throne? Theron? Oh. I don't, I don't know. know. She's phenomenal in it. Her she- name always gets thrown around. <laughs> 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 She's phenomenal in it. Like, Sorry. if I didn't know it was her, I would not have known that was her. <laughs> I mean, like, what was it her? She looks nothing like herself. They did a great job with the transformation, <laughs> is what I was saying. Christina Ricci's in it, too, right? Yes, she is. She plays the girlfriend. Tyra. But they changed the girlfriend in the movie. They changed the name of the girlfriend. The yes. Movie. Yeah. Shell. Shell. Shelly. Shelly? <clears throat> Selby. Selby. So I remember it was something weird. Mm-hmm. So anyways, we're going to talk about Eileen. She is one of the most famous serial killers in the U.S. because she's a woman. And we don't get very many female serial killers. That get caught. <laughs> okay, boy. Still. No, it's just like a hypothesis <laughs> of mine. I feel like, like... Maybe they're more clever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think okay. she gets it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sarah's like, yes, I'm on board. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're sneaky. <laughs> I get it. Sneaky, sneaky. Sneaky Sarah's the original six. hype man. <laughs> really is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on board. Uh-huh. I don't even need <laughs> to talk about it. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. Um, just Aileen, d- Aileen, Aileen, Aileen. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> oh my god. Dolly Parton, is that you? Holy shit. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. <laughs> Poison is just sitting, <laughs> staring at me. I want that to be my ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how to cut the audio out, I, so I do. surprise I us all. I would love for us to be at work and for that to go off. <laughs> what do you What do you call um, a girl with one leg? <laughs> Hang on. I think I know, but I don't want to say because it's offensive. Like her name is it Eileen? It's Eileen. Okay. Yeah, because <laughs> she leans. <clears throat> she does on lean that one leg. Uh huh. Or on counters. On a wall. Okay. I don't know. Because they're making this joke not funny when you explain it. <laughs> <laughs> because it was so funny to start with. On counters and walls. <laughs> I just need to explain it to everybody. All right. A quick disclaimer before mm-hmm. I get into her early life. I'm going to briefly mention several triggering topics, including mm-hmm. rape, incest, abuse, and suicide. And... I don't condone anything that Eileen Warnos did later in life, but it is noteworthy to mention that she did, in fact, have a pretty fucked up childhood. End of disclaimer. They got it. Uh, Okay. Eileen Warnos was born Eileen Carol Pittman in Rochester, Michigan on February 29th, 1956. Her parents married when her mother, Diane Warnos, was only 14 years old. Um, Their first child... Eileen's brother, Keith, was born when Diane was 15, and a little less than a year after that, and two months before Eileen was born, Diane filed for divorce. Warners never actually met her father, and that's when she took her mother's last name, so that's how she becomes Eileen Warners. 
Um, her father was incarcerated at the time of her birth. Um, he was later diagnosed with schizophrenia and later still convicted of sex crimes against children. He committed suicide by hanging in prison in 1969. When Warnos was almost four, Diane abandoned her children, leaving them with their grandparents, who were noted to be alcoholics by several sources. She and her brother Keith were legally adopted soon afterwards. By the age of 11, Eileen began engaging in sexual activities in school in exchange for cigarettes, drugs, and food. Oh, that's kind of sad. Mm. It was also mentioned that she engaged in sexual activity with her brother and that her grandfather had sexually assaulted her and beaten her as a child. At the age of 14, she became pregnant after being raped by an accomplice of her grandfather. Um, she gave birth to a boy at home for at a home for unwed mothers in 1971, and the child was immediately put up for adoption. Eileen dropped out of school a few months after that, which was around the same time that her grandmother died of liver failure, and her grandfather threw her out of the house at the age of 15, and at this time she lived in the woods near her old home <coughs> and supported herself as a sex worker. At the age of 18, in 1974, she was arrested in Colorado for driving under the influence, disorderly conduct, and firing a 22 caliber pistol from a moving vehicle, and then later was charged with failure to appear for that. Two years later, in 1976, Warnos hitchhiked uh, to Florida, where she met a 69-year-old yacht club president, Lewis Fell. They got married pretty quickly, but she was pretty volatile, and would get into several confrontations at the local bars, which sent her to jail for assault. Um, she also hit her new husband with his own cane. Uh, he took out a restraining order against her, and they would annul their marriage after only nine weeks of marriage. Wow, that was quick. Not very long. <laughs> still longer than Kim Kardashian's wedding. Hey, <laughs> Is that joke still a thing? It, I'm making it a thing again. Okay. <laughs> Um, she briefly briefly returned to Michigan where she was arrested and charged with assault and disturbing the peace for throwing a cue ball at a bartender's head. Oh. Ooh, ow. Three days after that incident, her brother Keith died of esophageal cancer, and he left her $10,000 from his, his life insurance. She used the money on a, a drunk driving fine and a new luxury car, which she wrecked very shortly after. She came back down to Florida where she committed a string of crimes from the late 70s to 1988, including robbery of a convenience store where she stole $35 and two packs of cigarettes for which she spent a year in prison, attempted to pass forged checks at a Key West bank. A year in prison. Hold up. A year in prison for $35. Seems very extreme. And two packs of cigarettes. Which two packs of cigarettes has got to be what? Like $30 also? Two packs? $30? I feel like it's not like that back much, then. But... I'm saying like back then. <clears throat> I don't know how much inflation. I don't know. A pack of cigarettes. I've opposite. never bought a pack of cigarettes. They're cheaper. Right? I haven't either. <laughs> I was thinking they would be like $12 a pack. I don't know. I haven't bought cigarettes before, but I feel like they're 5 $6 okay. a pack. So even less. So probably like $50 total that she stole. A year seems, I don't know, that's me, that seems extreme. I don't it know. does seem extreme. <clears throat> For first offense. It sounds like it maybe wasn't her first offense. Also, but... maybe it was armed robbery. Oh, that's, oh, true. that's true. That is true. That would make more Good sense. Good point. Mm, thank you. So she did the forged checks at a Key West bank. She was suspected in the theft of a revolver and ammunition. Ah, there it is, armed. In <laughs> Miami, she was arrested and charged with car theft. Resisting arrest and obstruction of justice after using an aunt's name. Um, and at that time, police found the stolen revolver and ammunition from the prior offense. So she's no longer suspected. She stole it. Mm. Um, she and then it. she was detained and questioned after a male companion accused her of pulling a gun in his car and demanding $200. And at this time, again, police found a twenty two caliber pistol and spare ammunition. Mm. There were also some sources that say that she was a uh, sex worker during that time and hitchhiked all up and down the Florida highways. Yeah. She was commonly described by law enforcement as erratic and easily angered. Hmm. Okay. That sounds about right. 
So sometime around 1986, sometime during that year, Eileen met a woman named Tyra Moore. And Tyra was a hotel maid at one uh, Daytona Beach bar. They moved in together pretty quickly. And Eileen was able to support them both by working as a sex worker. And she claimed that she was in love with Tyra. So, you know, if you think about it, she really didn't have many people that showed love to her Mm -hmm. in her life. So, you know, Tyra was probably the first person who was actually genuinely nice to her. Um, So their relationship was pretty hot and heavy, pretty fast. And she was felt like Tyra was her soulmate. And they were together for approximately three years. So we've already mentioned that that Eileen was a murderer. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys just a rundown of of some of her victims and kind of go through them and what happened. She murdered seven men over a period of about 12 months. The first one was Richard Mallory. He was 51 years old. He was murdered November 30th, 1989. He was an electronics store owner in Clearwater, Florida. He saw Eileen hitchhiking, so he was being a nice guy and picked her up. And uh, something, though, happened during their interaction that made her snap. That's what the investigators say. Because, as you mentioned, she had been already hitchhiking. So that was not new behavior for her. And she had already been working as a sex worker. So if that was something that was going down in the car, then that also was not new behavior for her. So something, though, happened between the two of them that really was a turning point for her. Um, And he became, unfortunately, her first victim. Later on, we find out that he was a convicted rapist, and she claims that she killed him in self-defense after he sodomized her and beat her. Two days later, his car was found, and on December 13th, his body was found several miles away in a wooded area by two men who were searching for scrap metal. He had been shot four times, uh, but two of the bullets to the left lung were the ones to be determined the cause of death. Investigators found it interesting, though, because she had shot him with a twenty two caliber pistol. Hmm. Weird. Sounds familiar. Yes. Which, I don't know much about guns and bullets and wounds from bullets, but they found it interesting because apparently it makes very small bullet wounds, bullet holes. Yeah, so they made it a point, you know, to to make that a, known. Okay. Uh, because she shot him multiple times, but he died very slowly and over a few days. Over a few days, <clears throat> mm-hmm. dang. He was basically left there to rot and die. Yeah. So about six months later, um, David Spears was killed. He was 47 years old. He was a construction worker in Winter Garden, Florida. And he was declared missing on May 19th, 1990, after he did not show up um, at his ex-wife's house. His car was found on the side of the interstate, and a few days later, on June 1st, his naked body was found along U.S. Route 19 in Florida. He had been shot six times. Mm -hmm. Just a few days later, after David Spears' body was found, um, we hear about Charles Carscadden, and he was 40. He was killed May 30th, 1990. He was a part-time rodeo worker, and according to Eileen, he was refusing to pay her for her services, which escalated into a fight, and, you know, she got angry, and she shot him. On June 6, 1990, his body was found in Pasco County. He had been shot nine times and was wrapped in an electric blanket. Uh, By the time his body was found, it was severely decomposing, and witnesses actually saw Eileen in his car. And she pawned a gun that belonged to him. So they're kind of starting to get some clues, but they're not really connecting the dots that these are all done by the same person yet. Mm -hmm. The next person was Peter Sims. He was her next victim. And investigators called this one the pivotal case. Uh, He was 65 years old, a retired merchant seaman. And he had a... Are you just going to gloss over that? (laughs) She wants to make a joke about the word semen. I I wanted to make a joke too. Please, but I didn't want to be insensitive. But I we already know I'm insensitive, so it is what it is. He was a seaman, a seaman, if you will. That's all I'm going to say about that. He worked with other seamen. That's right. Okay, and together there were lots of seamen. So much seamen. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> I have nothing to add to this conversation. Lizzie, <laughs> anything from you? I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> it was a gaggle of semen. <laughs> there it is. There's the joke. Got it. Uh, okay, well, back to Peter. He was actually a really nice guy. Okay. And <laughs> what did has, I do? She has jokes about his name being Peter. His name's oh, Peter and he was a seaman. He was a seaman. Oh, I feel bad saying this. But I know, because he was, he was a nice dude. I mean, get the joke out. I get it. That Peter. was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> his name's Peter. Okay. Uh, nothing against pe- na- people named Peter. Okay, who are also seamen, but <laughs> we <laughs> we need to donate to the Peter the Seaman Foundation. It's a very specific foundation. <laughs> what do they need? The why do they Why do they need a foundation? Probably raincoats. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> raincoats. <laughs> It's very wet. Yes. <laughs> For the semen. Yeah. There yeah. it is. <laughs> okay. I like that. Anyways, back to Peter. All right. So, <laughs> Peter. Peter. You know, Peter, in June 1990, he had left Florida for Arkansas on a road trip. He was going to go visit his brother. And when they found his car, he had a whole bunch of Bibles in the car that he had planned on handing out along the way. Oh, Peter. I know. Poor Peter. <clears throat> um,. Uh, so that was in June when he left to go on the road trip. On July 4th, his car was found in or- Orange Springs, Florida. Eileen and Tyra were spotted with the car, and Eileen's palm prints were found on the inside door handle. Unfortunately, though, his body was never found. The next victim is Troy Burress. He was 50 years old. Oh, gosh. Here comes more jokes. He was a sausage salesman. <laughs> Yeah, he was. <laughs> I can't. Even I couldn't think of seriously. Like, That's a very specific assessment. I know. And they excuse mentioned me. it multiple times. Do they go door to door and say, excuse me, ma'am, Matter you look like you need some sausage? I think that they do. I think so, it is a door to door thing. Or it was. It is. I do have a logistical question. Like, is the sausage the answer, in the, the car? Does he have a cooler? Does he go door to door offering his, his sausage? <laughs> no, not in his pants. There's no sausage in his pants. <laughs> Does he go door to door like Girl Scouts, and then he comes back a few weeks later with the sausage? You know, I'm going to be honest. I did not Google <laughs> what is sausage, sausage salesman, salesman in the cheese Florida. Salesman? I need a cheese salesman. <laughs> yeah, they may as well make it a full charcuterie right. board if you're going to sell the yeah. sausage. And then the cracker salesman comes right on through. And a on. sausage like, salesman marries a <laughs> cheese <laughs> saleswoman. Oh, it's a match made in charcuterie yes. heaven. Who sells the board? Um, their son. Oh. Oh. Mm-hmm. And then their daughter provides the crackers. So I guess the son needs <laughs> the to do the crackers. Business. Her name's going to be Salty Sally. <laughs> what? Salty <laughs> Sally sold sausages by the seashore. Oh, I see. <laughs> Thank you. Salty Sally sells sausages down by the seashore. Yeah, nailed it. My tongue twister. Perfect. Okay. Sorry, <clears throat> sausage salesman. It was a sausage it was this salesman. Again, this is- <laughs> I can't even get it out. Oh, okay. He was a sausage salesman from Ocala. 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 Okay. So, matter of fact, he was out making deliveries for his oh, companies. He's delivering the sausage. He <laughs> was. I appreciate that, Nikai. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> I'm sorry to all the people in need. In need of sausage. Traveling sausage salesman. <laughs> This can't be a real job. <laughs> Why is this a job? Is, I don't Was know. there a need? Obviously. Florida, Florida, are you okay that you can't go to the store to get I sausage? Mean, is Florida ever it's okay? Florida's never okay. <laughs> Florida. That is true. It's it's gator sausage. Florida, are you okay? <laughs> gator sausage. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> oh. I'm sure that's a thing. Oh, I'm for sure it is. No. Gator jerky. You need fried gator and gator jerky, yeah. I've had gator on a stick before. Here in Missouri, actually. I've had fried gator. I think it was probably chicken or something like that, but <laughs> they said it was gator. And you bought it. Yep. Fun so, fact. So you can tell everybody you ate gator on a stick. <clears throat> in Florida, where I had the fried gator, my husband had, it's really a kind of fish, but it's called dolphin. And so I told him he was eating dolphin. <laughs> Oh, no. But it's like a dolphin fish. It's different than like a dolphin you would think of, but it was delicious. Can I Google a dolphin fish? Yes, you can. Permission to Google. He was like, 
it was like the special of the day and they're like you can have dolphin or whatever and he was like huh and my grandma was like no 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 it's a dolphin fish <laughs> that don't seem right i feel like that's what they tell people <clears throat> who came up with those names oh, like you're eating flipper <laughs> i need you to know that uh, wow he's bougie a dolphin fish is mahi mahi mm-hmm. oh why don't they just call it that why i don't they- come on now okay anyways all right moving on Continue, from our sorry. sausage salesman um he was out making deliveries for his company. And, yeah, he was. And he disappeared <laughs> on his route. Uh-huh. Bad news. All right. So it turns out he picked up Eileen to give her a ride. Um, but investigators say that they don't believe sex was involved at all in this interaction. In the sausage delivery. Come I know. On. I'm like, what? It's but the name begs for it. His family states that... He was a very sweet guy, and he was trying to help her out. He was known to pick up hitchhikers regularly, and they had warned him multiple times to not be picking up people. Did because... the 70s teach you nothing, people? I mean, it's it's early 90s, so... The 70s uh, should have taught you something. We, we'll never learn. We'll never you know? learn. All right, he was reported missing on July 31st, 1990, and on August 4th, his body was found in a wooded area along State Road 19 in Marion County. He had been shot twice, and in this case, investigators realized that the wounds were also caused by a twenty two caliber pistol. Mm, there it is. Huh. So this is when they started finally putting things together. Right. Maybe this is the same person. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Could it be? Um, yeah, they started realizing there's a pattern here. And not just with the weapon, but they realized that all the victims were white males who were also near a major roadway. Not only did they realize that there was a pattern, but they started thinking maybe they were looking for a female. So that is why they started finally putting things together around this time. Why did they start looking at a female? Do you know? <coughs> and I don't know the answer. I'm just wondering. Um, I think it had to do with the fact that they were all white males, and then a couple of them were known to... Have interactions frequently Pick with up sex, sex workers. workers. Yes. Okay. And maybe the weapon? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like that may have had something to do with it. The fact that it was a, a smaller type of gun. Yeah. All right. Next victim is Richard Dick Humphreys. Um, I'm going to call him Rich. Yeah, I think. okay. That's yeah. a good name. He was 56 years old and he was a retired U.S. Air Force major. He was a former state child abuse investigator Ooh. and former chief of police. So he was kind of an important guy. He was out doing some home checks because he was working for social services at the time. And somewhere along the way, he had met up with Eileen. So what they think happened is that he was at a gas station. And when he got back into the car, she climbed into the car at the same time. And when she did this, she held him at gunpoint. and demanded that he drive to a certain spot out in the wooded area and then she shot and killed him and stole some stuff from him on september 12 1990 his body was found in marion county florida he was fully clothed and had been shot six times in the head and torso mm. all right so we have one more victim and that is walter antonio he was 62 years old walter walt he was a truck driver and a security guard and on November 19th, 1990, his body was found near a remote logging road in Dixie County, Florida. He had been shot four times. She shoots them multiple times. Yep. I wonder well, if so that's kind of, type of gun. It's not like a killing gun. Well, that's interesting you yes. say that. Yeah. And they're showing, they bring that up. I'm sure you'll probably talk about that too, mm-hmm. because it shows that there was intent to kill. Yep. Multiple shots. All right, so they find out, you know, they're starting to realize that she has a specific MO when she has a, an act that she uses regularly. She'd be on the side of the road. Once um, she was picked up, she'd tell them that she was heading in the same direction as them. And she'd tell them she needed money. And she'd say, if you help me, I'll help you. She'd kind of insinuate that she'd give sexual favors for money. Mm-hmm. And if they showed that they weren't interested, she'd just ask to get off at the next exit. And if they seemed interested, then usually how that, that's how things went down. But she did not kill every person that she met or took a hitchhike ro- road from. <laughs> ride from ride is from. what I meant to Everyone say. Everyone gave her a ride, yeah. <laughs> All right. So once they figured out the pattern, um, they looked back at some of the cases and started putting all the pieces together. 
And this is the last thing I'll tell you before we move on. So they realized that back in July of 1990, during the case of our friend Peter, Peter Sims, they realized that there was some similarities between his case and the others. And witnesses had seen a car crash and they saw two women get out and they were yelling at each other. One of them even looked hurt after the car accident. Apparently it was pretty bad. Like the car flipped over. Mm -hmm. When they got out and they were yelling at each other, they didn't ask for help or didn't accept any help. Instead, they argued and ran away. So, obviously, this stuck out to some Mm -hmm. of the witnesses there. They were then brought together with composite artists, and they sketched out what they explained. And turns out they looked pretty darn similar to Eileen and Tyra. Hello, friends and enemies. We want to introduce you to our podcast, Marmalade Mysteries. We are four best friends brought together by true crime, but separated geographically. Because apparently we have to be independent people or something. Is this just another true crime podcast? Mm, Kind of. We discuss murders and mysteries that confuse and baffle and cover missing people to help rally community awareness. But the most important part of our podcast is our friendship. Aww. We have Ariel, our foodie who lives in London, Georgia, our bon vivant in New Orleans, Lisa, our nurse who is saving the world in Texas, and Olivia, our anime lover in Hong Kong. Despite living across the world from each other, we make it work. With late nights, early mornings, and lots of coffee, time zones are our biggest enemy. We're just having fun with it, and we want you to come along this adventure with us. Get ready to bring your theories about the most talked about murders and mysteries of our time. Like what you hear? Love true crime? Subscribe to Marmalade Mysteries and look out for new episodes each Monday. Stay mysterious, and we'll see you on the other side. And that's how basically they got caught. So that was in (laughs) July 1990. In January 1991, so it took about six months for them to get found, January 9th, specifically 1991 eileen was arrested on an outstanding warrant at the last resort which was a biker bar police found more uh tyra the next day in scranton pennsylvania and i want to know if dwight Schrute caught her because he's a volunteer with the sheriff's department i don't know if you know this was she stealing beets i bet she was but she was caught in scranton pennsylvania so dwight had to have something to do with it is this the baseline for the Scranton Strangler? Yes. I knew it. <gasps> yes. I knew it. Dwight caught it her and said, sense. listen, this could be the Scranton Strangler. Okay. Totally it's different MO, but it's okay. And then Toby came in and that's how it all. Damn it, Toby. <laughs> Damn it, Toby. Goodbye, <laughs> Toby. All right. So Tyra agreed to confess in exchange for immunity from prosecution because she knew that it was going down. So she returned to Florida with police and was put under police supervision. While police was monitoring the call, she made several calls to Eileen, pleading for her to help clear her name. About a week later, on January 16th, 1991, Eileen eventually confessed to the murders. She claimed that the men had all tried to rape her, and she had killed them in self-defense. I don't know why I went backwards here. Oh, no, I went forwards. <laughs> I was like, January 14th, wait a second, 1992, a year later. <laughs> what <Okay>. is time? <laughs> I was like, wait a second. That was so weird. All right. So a year (laughs) later, Eileen went to trial for the murder of Mallory. So he was the first victim. And sorry, I went by their last name. So I'm not going to be able to tell you which one's Peter and which one's Dick. It was was (laughs) Richard. All right. So Mallory was the first victim. So fun fact, usually a previous conviction is inadmissible in court. But Florida has something called the Williams Rule, which is basically... Relevant evidence of collateral crimes is admissible at jury trial when it does not go to prove the bad character, but is used to show motive, intent, knowledge, modus operandi. I can never say that word. Modus (laughs) operandi. Is that it? I have no clue. Close. Sounds right. Or lack of mistake. So basically, any previous conviction she had got, they could use if it was showing a motive and intent and knowledge and stuff. So, because of Florida, they were able to use prior convictions for her. Way to come in clutch, Florida. I know. Florida. We're doing okay there. (laughs) So, because of this, the prosecution, like I said, was allowed to introduce evidence from other crimes to show a pattern of her illegal activity. On January 27th, Eileen was convicted of Mallory's murder with Tyra's testimony. 
Psychiatrists for the defense testified at that time that she was mentally unstable and had been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and antisocial personality disorder. Four days later, she was sentenced to death. So March 31st, 1992, a couple months later, she had the trial for Humphreys, Buress, and Spears, three other men. Um, she pled no contest to their murders, saying, quote, she wanted to get right with God. And in her statement to court, she said, quote, I wanted to confess to you that Richard Mallory, so the one she had already been convicted of, did violently rape me, as I've told you, but the others did not. They only began to start to, end quote. So on May 15th, 1992, she was given three more death sentences for those three men. <clears throat> June 1992, she pled guilty to the murder of Karskadden. So November 1992, she got her fifth death sentence. So the she's going to die. Yeah, yeah okay. she's got five death sentences really at this point. <laughs> got it. The defense tried to introduce evidence that Mallory, the first guy, had been tried for intent to commit rape in Maryland. And they showed that he actually was committed to a treatment facility for sexual offenders for uh, four years and received treatment. Sorry, not for four years, for eight years. Um, They also said that he possessed strong sociopathic tendencies, but the judge refused to allow anything admitted into court and denied Eileen a request for a retrial in his case. Basically saying just because he was a rapist before does not necessarily mean, like, it's still her word against. Like, in that case, doesn't mean that he was uh, trying to rape her then. Right. Okay. Right. (laughs) But also he's dead and he can't speak for himself right that's what i'm saying it's like her word against like Mm -hmm. i mean nobody else's because he's dead so february 1993 19 gosh dang here we go three february 1993 eileen pled guilty to the murder of antonio and was sentenced to death again uh like you said they never found sim's body so they could not bring any charges against her for his death so for those keeping track that's six death sentences for her Seven, seven we're going murders. Wait, seven murders, yes. They're pretty sure that she killed Sims, but there's no body to find, so <laughs> it's hard to tie her to it. So Eileen told many inconsistent stories throughout her prison sentences. She initially claimed that all seven men raped her, and it was self-defense. Then she recanted and said it was robbery and not wanting to leave a witness behind. She was interviewed by Nick Broomfield, so he is a documentary maker, and he made two documentaries on her and did several interviews, spent a lot of time with her. Um, At one point, she thought that the cameras were off and told him that it was self-defense, but that she also hated being on death row and was just wanting to die at that point. So there is a psychopathy checklist. I'm going to kind of go through this little test for you guys real quick. Oh, to see if we're psychopaths? No, I'm not going to give it to you. I'm just going to talk oh, about it. I'm gonna how it's my, scored. I'm going to answer questions. Let's do that. I was looking forward to it, but we're, right. we're going to answer anyways. Ask the questions. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a checklist. It's 20 items of perceived personality traits and behaviors. It's filled out by the person along with a review of collateral info. So records, case studies, things like that. So... Each item is scored from 0 to 2, 0 being doesn't apply at all, and 2 being applies. So of this 20, high score you can get is a 40. What's, what's if it one? doesn't versus does, what's in the middle? 1. <laughs> from 0 to 2. Yeah, but like... <laughs> what does a 1 mean? Like applies all the time, applies <laughs> sometimes. Some, applies some of the time. Got it, she thank said you. said 1. One. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought between you were asking the, a dumb question. Between <laughs> does or does not... One. Sometimes <laughs> and often. Okay. What's between zero and two? Thank you. So factor one, there's two so factors. So condescending. Oh my gosh, I hate you both so much. <laughs> there's two factors that it's gauging. One of them is whether you, it's kind of, mm-hmm. so selfish callousness and remorseful use of others. So this is correlated with narcissistic personality disorder, extroversion, and a positive affect. Factor two is gauging your chronically unstable, antisocial, and socially deviant lifestyle. So this is more often correlated with antisocial and borderline personality disorders, reactive anger, criminality, and impulsivity and violence. Okay. So like I said, 40 is the highest score. The cutoff for psychopathy is 30 in the U.S. and 25 in the U.K. And I wonder why U.K. has a lower threshold than we do. 
What does that um, say about Americans? <laughs> We're like, you got to be 30 in UK is like, 25 is really. We let a lot of things slide. <laughs> <laughs> right? You can't call everybody a psychopath. So. Right. Well, can we guess what she got? Yes, guess what she got out of 40. I think she got 33. Ooh, I was going to say 32. 32. <gasps> nice. Good job. So she got a 32 out of 40. All right. And so they theorized the people who knew her best and studied her during this time said that her childhood sexual abuse, her history as a sex worker, and all the traumatic experiences, such as her bio mother leaving her, her grandmother ignoring the abuse, the abuse she got from her grandfather, all of these contributed to her psychopathy. All right, so Eileen was incarcerated at the Florida Department of Corrections. Uh, She was on death row there and then was transferred to the Florida State Prison for her execution. She attempted to appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court, but this was denied in 1996. So in 2001, she submitted a petition to the Florida Supreme Court and wrote, quote, I killed those men, robbed them as cold as ice, and I'd do it again, too. There's no chance in keeping me alive or anything because I'd kill again. I have hate crawling through my system. I am so sick of hearing this. She's crazy stuff. I've been evaluated so many times. I'm competent, sane, and I'm trying to tell the truth. I'm one who seriously hates human life and would kill again. It's like the documentary maker was, he was like, she was ready to die. She hated being on death row. So she was basically trying to like speed it up, they think. Mm -hmm. But also I kind of believe that all that stuff that she said. She had a rough time. Um, Her attorneys tried to say that she was mentally incompetent and could not be making this request to the Supreme Court. But a panel of court appointed psychiatrists were like, "Uh, no, she's competent. And they disagreed. So they allowed it. In 2002, she began accusing prisoner or not prisoners, I'm sorry, but prison guards of poisoning her food with dirt and saliva and urine and would refuse to eat. She became very paranoid. She thought that staff there wanted to rape her and kill her. So she was getting, which I mean, honestly, being on death row and that much isolation, mm-hmm. it's not good for anybody. Right. Let alone someone who already has some tendencies. Um, so she had several interviews, like I said, that were recorded for TV. Her last words on camera were, quote, thanks a lot, society, for railroading my ass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All um, right, Eileen, come on. <laughs> she said this to Broomfield. She also said, quote, a raped woman got executed and was used for books and movies and shit. So she was basically like, you guys are just like talking about me in the media and did not appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Or making money off of her mm-hmm. her uh, her trauma. Yes, yep. yes. She's not wrong there. I mean, she's not wrong. She she was not a nice gal. But. Right, right. October 9th, two thousand two. She was executed. She declined her last meal. She had just a cup of coffee instead. Her last words were, "Quote: Yes, I would just like to say I'm sailing with the Rock, and I'll be back like Independence Day with Jesus, hmm. June sixth, like the movie." Big mothership and all. I'll be back. I'll be back. (laughs) I shouldn't laugh. (laughs) End quote. I mean, kind of just shows, like, her mental state at that point, too. Like, The Rock, like Dwayne Johnson? I don't know. It just said, I'm sailing with The Rock. I'll be back like Independence Day with Jesus. But he's still alive. I I mean, he was alive in 2002. Maybe she was a fan. I don't know. She just really liked him. So she died at 9.47 a.m. Okay. She was the 10th woman in the U.S. to be executed and the second in Florida to be executed since the 1876 U.S. Supreme Court decision that restored capital punishment. She was cremated and her ashes were spread beneath a tree in Michigan. Did you say 1876? 1876. When they reinstated the death, the capital punishment. That's what she said. I thought that was like in the recent or more recent, recenter. <laughs> I don't know. I could not tell either of you, so. That is what my internet research said. Okay. All right. So she, her ashes, (laughs) my internet research that I worked very hard on. Her ashes were spread beneath a tree in Michigan by her childhood friend. Uh, She requested that the song Carnival play at her funeral. So the last quote I have. Britney Spears? No. I know it's my seat. All eyes on me in the center of the ring. (laughs) No. I actually looked Click up the action. songs. <laughs> Do you want us to play Britney Spears at your funeral? <laughs> she probably does, yeah. <laughs> I'm a slave for can you. you or... please, <laughs> could you please do some choreography? Can me be one more time? 
Yes. No, circus. <laughs> oh, okay. I like that one better. All right. So per Broomfield, so this is the documentary maker <clears throat> who got to know her very well with his interviews. So last quote I have for him. He said, quote, I think this anger developed inside her and she was working as a prostitute. I think she had a lot of awful encounters on the roads. And I think this anger just spilled out from inside her and finally exploded into incredible violence. That was her way of surviving. I think Eileen really believed that she had killed in self-defense. I think someone who's deeply psychotic cannot really tell the difference between something that is life-threatening and something that is a minor disagreement that you could say something that she didn't agree with. She would get into a screaming black temper about it, and I think that's what had caused these things to happen. And at the same time, when she wasn't in those extreme moods, there was an incredible humanity to her. End quote. Can I circle back? It was 1976. 1976? I probably mistyped because I was typing and I found a lot of errors while I was typing. <laughs> 1976. Okay. Second woman in Florida to be executed. So, there is Eileen. I think she had a terrible start in life mm-hmm. and was honestly set up for failure. Mm-hmm. I agree. Not to excuse what she did at all. Right. <laughs> but I'm saying she was not set up for success at all in this world. Yeah. It's a perfect storm for like a huge mental breakdown, basically. Pretty mm-hmm. much, yeah. That's really yep. sad. Really sad all around. It is sad. And a lot of people have theorized, you know, did she really kill them? She thinks that she killed them in self-defense and that was how she justified it. But then she would go back and say that she didn't, but she thought they were going to rape her probably because she was traumatized just and had used been to raped so many times. Happen. Yeah. She probably just thought every man was going to rape her who was alone with her. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's how she justified it. Yeah, definitely a lot. All right, guys, that is our story on Eileen Warnos, the most infamous, famous, infamous, infamous serial killer, woman serial killer in U.S. history. We're going to work on that title. (laughs) (laughs) No, you say infamous if they're famous for bad reasons. So infamous. There we go. I got it. Anything else you guys want to add about Eileen? No. I mean, there's several. Can you please sing again? documentaries on it <laughs> yes there are several cool documentaries i think we already talked about monster what yeah. did you guys watch i watched eileen warnos mind of a monster did you watch any interviews with her did they include any of those in there um some when she was in prison yeah she looked she looked scary she looked very scary she looked very um not well mm-hmm I watched Very Scary People Yeah, on HBO. <laughs> I quite like that show. It's hosted by Donnie Wahlberg. Okay. Um, and there was actually a two-part series on her. Anyhow, I thought it was really good. He interviewed, interviewed a lot of the investigators that were in charge of that yeah. case. Thanks so much for tuning in this week to our group, True Crime. You can always catch us at thetipsyghost.com or send us an email at thetipsyghost at gmail.com. Please give us a five-star rating and a great review anywhere you listen to podcasts. We really appreciate it, and it does help. It does. Thanks so much for tuning in this week, guys. We will catch you guys next week. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye.